Hello my loves, I hope you're all well. We're back in lockdown here in England, but I thought we could spend some time together over a few days of work in the shop and in the studio. This footage actually started back in September. I can't believe it was still t-shirt weather then. And I was just packaging the latest orders in my shop. It's a really peaceful and mesmerizing process. Sometimes I still have moments where I can't. I don't know, it's hard to imagine my art and my work out there in other people's homes all around the world. I'm really so grateful, not just to the people who buy my stuff, but just to everyone who connects with me through these videos as well. Anyway, let's fast forward to the present day. It's time to print and package and send my latest physical Patreon bundles. The first thing I always start with is printing the sticker sheet because printing and cutting the stickers is the process that takes the longest. For this one, I have almost 200 bundles to put together and the theme across all the artwork is black and white, which was a really fun opportunity for me to work in monochrome and just see what I could do with just different values. It's also my first time including a sort of decorative washi tape in my sticker sheets, which I hope people will like. With the sticker sheets, I just try to think of stickers that I would use in my sketchbook or planner and go from there. So for example, the bundle for anyone who signed up in November is gonna be Winter Wonderland themed so people can have festive decorations for their journals and things. And I'd love to be chatting with you as I go, but we'll have to stick with a voiceover for now because the office currently sounds like this. I'm thinking of getting another printer so I can start working on the prints while the stickers are going but in the meantime there isn't a great deal else I can do between printing and cutting sticker sheets the whole process is quite hands-on so I really need to stay at my desk and keep on top of how things are coming along what I can do is set up everything else I'll need over the next few days of making these bundles so I'll be like cutting down paper to size for the prints organizing the postage info based on who's getting what and printing all those labels out cutting down the tissue paper that I'll wrap each bundle in and the tissue paper that I had ordered for this one hadn't arrived yet and I was getting quite nervous but it finally arrived much later in the day. I have way too much fun trying to find tissue paper each month that will fit with each theme so while I have alternatives around the office I'm really pleased that I got to use the specific tissue paper that I wanted for this one. And in any in-between time I get on with responding to emails and all your messages and comments. Now while I crack on, let me talk to you about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare, as I'm sure you're aware, is an online learning community offering thousands of inspiring classes for beginners to pros to lifelong learners on topics including illustration, photography, video, freelancing, the list goes on. While I tend to go to Skillshare for classes on art and creativity, I've actually been thinking about upping my Instagram game recently, but honestly, I just didn't know where to start. I'm actually losing a few hundred followers every month at this point, and there's a lot of conflicting and superficial information about social media stuff out there and it's not something that I'm naturally very good at and I knew if I really wanted to single out the most valuable information Skillshare would be the place to go. There are actually a few classes that I've saved for later but for now the best all-round one for me, the one that gave me the confidence boost that I needed to get started with taking better photos on my phone and just making posts that mean something was Mobile Photography Basics for Instagram Success by Tyson Wheatley. So if you're in a similar spot and you're curious about social media, creativity and business please do have a look. The first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership with unlimited access to thousands of classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. All right, let's see how these prints and stickers are coming along. It looks like I've got a long way to go.
Okay, it's been about eight and a half hours now and it's just started to rain, so hopefully that's not gonna affect the sound. But I am, I think, 110 sticker sheets in now, which is great. Another 82-ish left to cut out. And then on top of that, there will be about 80 additional individual stickers that I've printed, but still need to cut out. I've got about 94 prints finished, these ones. Um, so these are all printed. I've got about 100 left of these to print. And then another 80 or so prints this size, some different prints of that size that I'll need to print out. And then all 300-ish of those and those I will need to sign and number. And then obviously after that, there will be about 200 bundles that will need packaging up. I'll need to make sure that the right things are going to the right people. Um, I'll need to wrap them all up in tissue paper, write a little note for everyone as well, a little thank you note, um, get those all packaged up and ready to send off to the post office. So a lot to do, but I'm actually really pleased because I'm further ahead than I usually am on day one. I think I didn't really take into account how much quicker things would print in black and white, so I'm very pleased that my past self chose this as this month's theme. Usually I haven't got around to printing the prints at all on day one, usually I'm still about halfway through printing the sticker sheets, so to have all the sticker sheets printed already is amazing. It'll still take a day or so to have them all cut out, but that's just amazing. That is fantastic to be that far ahead. There's still a lot left to do. I think maybe two more full on days like today, I can have this done and be able to take this to the post office. And that means these could be in people's homes by the end of the week, which is just fantastic. If I can do that, it'll be a new record for me. So wish me luck. But thankfully, Ozzy's at home today, so he's taking care of dinner right now. And that means I can just head home now and relax, completely wind down veg out and recharge for the next couple of days.
in the studio today for a more typical day of work. There are only a couple of tasks on the list today, but they are big ones. So I started out just by clearing out all my emails that came in over the last few days of packaging, just sorting through all of those and catching up on everything I'd missed. And now I'm gonna set up to do some filming. So I've wanted to play with the color schemes across my work recently. I tend to default towards brighter colors just naturally and I do want more of a muted subdued look so I'm gonna try out the Zorn palette today just do some experiments see what I end up with so that's um cadmium red light yellow ochre and ivory black I think um and I also might try subbing out the black for um Payne's grey at some point maybe somewhere down the line um oh and white as well but for now I just want to swatch the colors see where I get with mixing the colors see what I can end up with and maybe do a couple of experiments try a couple of paintings with those colors and see if it works for me and I thought since I am going to be doing those experiments I might as well film it and share that with anyone that's interested Well, that was hard and it took forever. I think the swatching portion alone took over an hour for sure. And then I went on to paint a watermelon and a landscape. They were just two things that I thought would really push the boundaries of what that palette could do. And I like how they turned out, um, but I do need blue. I think that's just kind of confirmed it for me, which I did think would be the case. And even Anders Zorn, who um, is kind of famous for using this palette, I believe he used cobalt blue from time to time as well. So my next steps will be to figure out what blue I can add into my palette to not overdo it on the saturation level. Those will be the next few experiments that I do, but that will be for another day. For now, I need to get this footage onto the computer and probably start editing it. And hopefully you'll be able to see that video in the next few days. But as you can see, it's getting pretty dark. I probably have about an hour's work left in me and then it's time to chill. <laughs> 